Hello, hello everybody, it's your old pal Tuna here and welcome back to another video. Today on the channel, we are going to be attending an anime convention called Animathon in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. I am a full-time illustrator and comic artist, but doing conventions isn't my full-time job, but I've been having a blast doing them this year and filming the content for the vlog, so yeah, this is me from the future letting you know what happened in the past. I live in Vancouver, BC, so Edmonton's not too far from me, but it is going to be an out of town show. And I also haven't done an anime convention since before the shenanigans that happened in the last few years. So we're going back to an old stomping ground and we're gonna see how it goes. Starting with some prep leading up to actually leaving for the con. I didn't preface this when I was filming it. So the first clip you're gonna see is me unboxing some of my new enamel pins. And I made a little bit of a boo-boo while I was ordering them. So yeah, take it away, pass tuna. They look so good. That's exactly how I pictured them. Okay. It's, it's not. It's it's pretty bad. It's so, bad. so let me show you the mistake that I made here. Let me just say this. Yeah, I'm. I already beat myself up about it. So. <laughs> Oh, it's so tragic. So what I'm gonna have to do is sell them separately. Separately. Yeah, and not have them at the same time. So I'm gonna have to sell this batch, and then I'm gonna have to sell this batch. I'll, I'll order, I'll, I'll reorder them, and then I'll save the smaller ones for the future. Because it looks like a kitten, which is really cute. No, it's not acceptable. Yeah, it's not acceptable. Are you gonna sell them as a set? No, they're individual, which is the problem because I would have to sell the smaller ones for much less, obviously. Like, I'd probably have to sell this one for like $8 and this one for like $12. Or $10 and $15. And it was totally mine. I can't... I'm a fool. I should have caught it in the first place. They look, they look really good. So, I'll get the three of them. Excuse me, is that yours? It's got cat drool all over it now. Uh, and then these ones I'll keep for the future. Cause there's always, there's always more pins, but for this launch, I want it to be uh, cohesive. Little buddy, are you gonna miss me when I'm gone? No. Are you gonna even notice that I'm gone? No. So there is no time to waste right now. It is Wednesday, July 12th, and I am leaving for Edmonton tomorrow, July 13th at 9 a.m. or something like that. And I have so much to do. I completely, I don't know what I was thinking. I just procrastinated everything thinking, yeah, there's not that much to do. I've been doing conventions all year. So I've been working for the past two days, but it hasn't been stuff that I can really film. Today, I'm going to be tightening up and finishing off everything on the to-do list. The main stuff that I have to do is get my table layout together. So with every convention, I have different display materials that I'm able to bring with me based on size, weight, whatever. And because I'm flying to Edmonton for this one, my options are a little bit more limited. Luckily, I was able to ship three boxes ahead of me to my friend who lives over there and she took them. She's gonna bring them to the con for me. Amazing. Oh, he's so cute. Oh, he's so cute. So I'm going to recycle some old signs, build some signage out of foam core, and I want it to be cute, so I'm gonna see if I have time to make it cute. Then I have a few products that I wanna put together. So I wanna bring buttons. I have a button machine, so button maker, so I can build them all. I have some left over from VanCaf, but I'm gonna restock, maybe make some new designs, we will see. I also have to cut my hair and I would like to tone it. You know, just more stuff to cram into the day. And then finally putting it all together in the suitcase. So without further ado, it's time to get started and crank this all out before I have to leave tomorrow.
am not going to lie, that got a little stressful. The thing about every time that I'm moving around my apartment a lot and like making things with my hands, it really stimulates Nori, my cat, and so he gets all up in my business and tries to play and tries to attack. And I was basically troubleshooting what I was gonna do as I was doing it. So it was requiring a lot of my brain power and being distracted. Well, let's just say I cried, but only once. I've healed with some pancakes and now I am ready to get into the second phase of what I need to do today. That is making my buttons. I'll show you this funny little drawing that I did as well. This is basically my idea for the table. Because my apartment is small, I really didn't wanna like go through the whole process of setting this all up just to have a working model. I was conceptualizing it based on the measurements of everything. So fingers crossed that this is gonna work out. As you can see here, I have all of my panels cut out and I also made a mistake and like cut one that I wasn't supposed to cut, but I think it's gonna be okay. Everything is dis disassembled and dismantleable to fit inside of my suitcases. And then I will use lots of tape to secure it all together when we set up together at the show, um, either tomorrow night or Friday morning. And then, I don't know, fingers crossed that everything is going to work out as I have envisioned it in my mind.
find good lighting in this uh, echoey basement suite. Hello and welcome to my Airbnb, everybody. Um, so obviously I am all set up for the con tomorrow. It was not my intention actually to set up this evening, but what ended up happening is I ran into Huge, as you saw, and we were like, why don't we just split an Uber to the convention center? Took advantage of the opportunity. It's great to be like mostly set up. So tomorrow morning I just roll in there, slap my merchandise on the table and start the weekend. <laughs> So this is a this is a big con. This is three days, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And I have to be there from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. every single day. So 10 hour shifts. I am on my own. Um, it turns out that I do know quite a few people who are tabling at the show. So hopefully I'll be able to have someone watch my table or maybe relieve me for a quick break. But it's pretty small, which is really cute because I was thinking it was gonna be something along the lines of like, Emerald City Comic Con, which was really big and bustling, but this is cozy. It reminds me of the anime cons that I used to do back in Vancouver years and years ago. Edmonton isn't the prettiest city um, that I've ever seen. There's also a blanket of like wildfire smoke that's rolled in. Um, so vibes are a bit apocalyptic, but I'm going to be in a nice air conditioned convention hall all weekend. But tonight is my night. Luckily, every time I go to a con to do a show, I usually have an evening where I get to just take time for myself. So it's not even five o'clock now, looks at fake invisible watch and I'm gonna go find a nice place to get dinner and maybe check out some shops or something like that. It is 10.30, the show floor has been open for an hour and a half. The vibes are good. It is a little bit hot in here, but not too bad. This morning I missed my bus, so I did have to take an Uber, and then I left my Gorillapod tripod in the Uber, and it cost $20 for them to bring it back to me, so I got that thing for $5 at Goodwill. I'm sure I could find another one. I feel really great. I'm super excited. Like I said, the vibes are excellent. Everyone is super friendly and super cute. Already made some sales, so let's go. Day one. I'll show you guys uh, the back of my table too, which is totally held together by tape and dreams. Um, this is the reality of being an artist. I did manage to set up my little uh, fulfillment station back here, which is great. I have some coffee. And yeah, we actually have a lot of space. This is a lot more than I'm used to at a show. Usually like the next table is right here. So I'll take, I'll take what I can get.
so cute. setting up the camera for this shot, I was very much feeling like I was filming a very different kind of video. <laughs> it's the end of day two. It feels like I've been doing this for a week straight, but I know I didn't get a lot of footage today because I was saving my camera battery, my phone battery, for uh, making square transaction sales because I didn't have a lot of auxiliary power to use at my disposal. I have a lot of information that I wanted to share with you and I didn't want to wait until I get back to Vancouver after the show to chat with you about it so I was worried I was going to forget. This is an anime convention as I'm sure I have mentioned multiple times. I have not done an anime convention since before the pan pandemonium which would have been back in like 2018, maybe even 2017. I can't even remember at this point because the stuff that I sell is 100% original material, I usually go for more general kind of like fan pop culture expo stuff, um, comic markets, art markets, and because the cost wasn't crazy to get over here, I decided to give it a spin and see if anime conventions are a world that I want to reopen to my market life potential. We are two thirds of the way through the show and I can definitely say that I don't think the anime world is where I want to be. So the main thing is that a lot of people are looking for fan stuff of their favorite anime characters, which is like, duh, <laughs> and totally legit. It's just not something that I can provide for them. So I do feel like the audience at the show isn't really specifically looking for the kind of stuff that I'm selling. The general audience. Now, I've still done super well over the last two days. We'll go over that in specifics towards the end of the video. It's certainly not going to be my best show. It's certainly, certainly not going to be my worst show. And one of the things that surprised me the most is I brought a ton of graphic novels just kind of because I could. And my Be Haunted, my adult aimed graphic novel that I made with my friend has sold so well. So many people are open to receiving original stories and storytelling. I think I've sold like 15, which is more than I sell at, probably more than I sold at Emerald City Comic Con if I'm honest, which is a literal comics convention. So hell yeah, if you're someone who picked up Be Haunted, I love that, thank you so much. And I did meet like so many people who are either fans or who really did connect with my work. And obviously that is like why I go to these kinds of shows is to connect directly with people rather than through this little screen <laughs> like we are right now. And coming here to Edmonton, it's a completely new group of people who have never been exposed to my work before. And I've given out about a billion business cards. So hopefully, the people who did connect with my work will now follow me and engage with my stuff that I post online. And so while I wouldn't do the anime thing again, I am really glad that I did and I've had a very lovely time so far. Another thing that I've noticed about this show is that the average sale value has been like quite a bit lower than what I'm used to. I think through Square it gives me like uh, uh, an actual average, but that's a weird number because a lot of people are buying like one $3 button or one $4 sticker. And I don't know if it's like that they're trying to spread the love and that they're like working within their budget. But usually at a show, it's quite common for me to have multiple people who will be spending over a hundred dollars at my table, buying a whole bunch of stuff. I don't think I've had a single person spend over a hundred dollars at my table at this one. And as well, I have a special where I do if you buy three sticker sheets, you get the fourth one for free. And at other shows, the majority of people who buy sticker sheets will take advantage of that offer. And at this one, it's like 25%. So all of this information is to say, as per usual, 
Conventions are very fickle beasts. And because I don't do this full time, I don't have a ton of data. I'm not like min maxing my experience. So every time I go to a show, it's like I'm going in blind and hoping for the best. I think that it's like personally kind of hard to live like that because as an artist, no matter how hard you try, you're never going to fully divorce your ego from the experience of other people interacting with your work. And so when I see people around me experiencing this unbelievable financial success with the fan art that they're creating, it makes me look at myself and be like, oh shit, like, am I doing the wrong thing? Like, did I take a left turn at Albuquerque into trying to do my own original stuff when I should have, because I used to do fan art. That was how I got into doing conventions um, and starting my career as a full-time artist was doing fan-based stuff because it's such a great way to connect with people who might not know your work like separately. And here I am, I've been doing this for 10 years. I've been full-time for, I don't know, seven. I honestly don't even keep track anymore. And I'm still experiencing this weird, like I'm not good enough and I need to change to suit this audience that like, isn't even specifically my audience. Like <laughs> they're not not engaging with my work because my work is bad. It's just not for them, but it's hard sometimes to remind myself of that. So given that I was on the floor for 10 hours in my own head, there were some ups and downs, but I managed to have some really good chats with my neighbors and with my friends who are at the show. And while we are all having wildly different experiences because we all sell different things and we all approach what we're doing differently, there's still this sense of understanding <laughs> across the board and I'm learning from them as much as I am learning from the interactions that I'm having on the show floor. I don't know if the tone of this segment is going to come off exactly how I want so we'll see in editing if what I've just said really tracks. I'm just very tired right now so if I seem a little weird it's because I'm friggin beat. It's like 10 o'clock. I woke up at 7 and I have been going since then <laughs> so it's time to play some stardew lie in bed have a shower hope that gummy kicks in soon because it's time for sleep <laughs> Good morning friends, it's day three Tuna here and I got an excellent night's sleep last night so I am feeling just fine. I also rolled in a little bit late and showed up with a coffee as one does. I am ready for an illustrious day at Anime Con, I guess. Today we're taking down at the end of the day so it ends at 6.30 and then I will literally tear everything apart as quickly as I can, head back to my Airbnb to drop stuff off and then get one final dinner with a friend in town before crashing for the night and then getting my plane back tomorrow. And I actually don't even know when my plane is because I lost the email and I'm waiting for them to send me the check-in information, presumably 24 hours in advance. So tomorrow morning, will I have time to do anything more in Edmonton? I don't know. I decided to attempt some sales marketing today to reduce the number of books I have to bring home. And literally two seconds after I put up a sign, someone bought both, so let's go.
so there's a channel on this TV. It's like Roku TV or something. That's literally just episodes of Forensic Files. And this is exactly what my brain needs to decompress. But today was so chill, to be honest. I started late and then we finished two hours earlier than I thought we were supposed to finish. So compared to the last two days, absolutely a breeze. Today was really fun too. I got a great night's sleep, so I was feeling totally peppy <laughs> and 100% at the start of the day. And it started off really busy too, which was like kind of exactly what I needed because I was worried that Sunday was gonna be really slow. Often it's the slowest day of a con, especially a three-day con. But basically Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, I made exactly the same amount of money each day. So weird. A pretty worthwhile weekend. My flight home is just after noon tomorrow and I am ready to go back there. It's very possible I won't bother to vlog any of that because there is already so much footage that's going to be going into this. I'm so sorry if this video ends up being like 45 minutes long, but I feel like making these con videos are some of my favorite vlogs that I've made so far on this channel, so indulge me please. When I get back to Van, we'll go over the final info thoughts when I am like rested and not at the the end of a very long day but this is Edmonton tuna checking out I will see you guys when I get back to Vancouver yeah <laughs> who's a little boy hello oh stranger danger oh little boy did you even notice I was gone? No. You're smaller than I remember. I'll stop bullying you for being so fat. All right, everybody, welcome back to Vancouver. Welcome back to the studio. I have just finished going through all of the footage and I am excited to wrap things up here. So we're almost done with the video. I know that it's a long one. I really hope you enjoyed coming along with me to Edmonton and seeing things from my perspective. The only thing that I really wanted to finish up with here is talking a little bit about money. I know that that's, you know, an interesting part of what it is that I'm doing here. And I wanna be able to share that kind of information so you can understand how I can justify these trips and kind of how I can actually make a business out of what it is that I'm doing. I'm gonna start with the fun number first, which is the gross amount of money that I made. Gross not being disgusting, but gross being the amount that I made in sales, not taking into account any of my expenses. Each day of the show, I made 1100 Canadian dollars, which is a grand total of 3300 Canadian dollars over the three days, which sounds like a lot, but let me explain to you how this all maths out now. There are three main types of expenses that will come out of that amount to turn this number to a much smaller number. The first one being my travel expenses. So that's like airfare, accommodations, and the Ubers and stuff that I had to take to and from the show. I am estimating here because I don't have my receipts in front of me, but I'm estimating about $600 in those expenses. The second type of expense that I have is my actual production cost. So that's what I paid to have all of these items made. Again, I actually don't have those exact numbers in front of me. So we're gonna estimate and we're gonna group that in with sales tax, which is the third expense, which I am meant to collect and then pay to the government in addition to like my income tax. This is called GST where I live. And I'm estimating this at about 30, 33% of my gross. Um, I think that this is a bit on the high side, but I would rather estimate on the high side than the low side. So let's say that that number is $1,100. That puts my expenses at about $1,700. So now you see why $3,300 doesn't seem like as much money. At this point, we're down to $1,600 Canadian in net profit. Now let me break this down for you a little bit further. I spent four full work days either working at the show or prepping for the show. And I'm not even going to count the two days that I took for travel and set up because, you know, I, I could justify that in, in another calculation. But for eight hour days, that's 32 hours of work. Now, if you take $1,600 and divide that by 32 hours of work, you end up around 50 Canadian dollars an hour. Then you need to take into account that I need to pay 25% of that in tax. <laughs> And it's just not that crazy of an amount of money. It's a great amount of money, don't get me wrong, totally worth going for, but anything less than that, and it starts to be kind of like, 
why am I going to all this effort just to do this? So yeah, that's the overall numbers situation with how the weekend went for me. Um, I was hoping to make a little bit more, but it's okay. I didn't, I didn't know what to expect and I learned a lot. And as I was saying earlier in the video, maybe anime conventions aren't really like where I want to go in terms of Oh, I'm gonna like go to all the anime conventions now, but certainly if some opportunities come up to do them again, I'll probably take it. My next show upcoming is in August and it is totally different. This is going to be Meow Fest Vancouver, which is a literal cat themed convention. People are gonna be selling like cat toys and cat clothes. And then there's a few illustrators who are coming up and I have a lot of cat related goods. So fingers crossed that it's going to be worthwhile. I guarantee that there will be a vlog related to that and we'll go into it when the time comes. But for now, you have reached the end of this video. Congratulations, this was a big one. I really hope you were entertained and I really hope you learned something. If you are also um, an artist trying to get into these sorts of scenes, maybe some of what I was sharing will be helpful to you. Be sure to subscribe if you want more more fun video content here on my channel. And if you like and leave a comment, the algorithm will be so stoked that you did. So just, you know, consider it. Thank you for spending another week with me. Stay sparkly. Don't let the cruel world dull your shine. And I will see you next time.